welcome back to Beyond Nutrition. I'm Afifa, your host, and today we are diving into a topic that's been gaining a lot of attention in the wellness world, probiotics. Are they really worth it or is it just another trend? Joining me today is Mr. Hermi, a Singaporean and former biomedical researcher with over 10 years of experience in immunology and infectious diseases. He also has co-authored numerous scientific publications and made meaningful contributions to the field throughout his research career. Welcome, Mr. Hermi. Great to have you here. Hi, Abifa. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Definitely, there's a lot of talk about probiotics, but not the full picture. Yeah. So, let's delve in. I love that, Hermi. Let's dive right in. Are probiotics really worth it? Hmm. Because I've seen people spending hundreds on gummies, powders, drinks, or is it just a clever marketing? Well, the short answer, some products are great, some are just not worth the money. Mm -hmm. uh, the word probiotic is often used that people think that anything with that, with that label is good. But not all probiotics deliver the benefits that they claim. I see. So that's the confusing part because everything says probiotics now. So how can we know which probiotics work and which doesn't? <clears throat> so take an example of a probiotic drink that you find at the supermarket. You no, know, it might promise you better digestion yeah. and stronger immunity. But when you look closer, they do not have the specific strains or the amount to make it useful. And on top of that, they are loaded with sugar. So you are actually actually doing more harm than good by feeding the back bacteria in the guts. Oh, so that is surprising because how can we know whether the probiotic is good or is it just another product that doesn't do much? Okay, so this is where it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. One common claim is that it contains billions of CFUs. Yeah. While this might sound impressive, right? But it is meaningless if the bacteria do not survive the journey to the gut. I see. So both survivability and also the total counts of probiotics are important. Exactly. So you can have uh, 50 billion CFUs in a capsule, but if most of them die in the stomach acid, then it is not helping at all. So it's all about the life strains that actually make it to your intestines. Having said that right here, May, is there any standard dose we should look out for? That's a great question, uh, which often gets misunderstood. There's, there's no one-size-fits-all dose when it comes to probiotics. It depends on the strain, uh, the the formulation and the purpose. The strain, the formulation and the purpose. So I guess that's the, the part that people don't realise. You are right. So many well-studied strains show benefit in the range from as low as 1 billion CFU to 10 billion CFUs per day. Okay, so does it mean that more is better or no? No. Mm -hmm. So especially with uh, multi-strain probiotics, uh, you don't always need a huge CFU count for each one because they work synergistically, which means that they support each other's function. That is super helpful, Yemi. Meaning to say that it's about the formulation, not just the number. I think that is what most people would just assume. Even me, myself, will assume higher the CFU, the better. Yes, that's right. It's always quality over quantity. Mm. What matters most are the strains are clinically supported, the doses align with those studies, and the formulation helps them survive and thrive in the gut. So, another red flag is the all-in-one probiotic claim. Mm -hmm. Many products promise uh, wide benefits, but they don't disclose the strains inside. So, you can't be sure what you are getting. I see. So, the all-in-ones also sounds overpromised, actually. Yes. So, because different strains do different things, mm -hmm. it's not enough to just see the word probiotic, mm -hmm. but you need to look at the actual strain listed, not just the species. I see. So that actually sounds important, Hermie. So for people who are buying off the shelf, right, how do they know what the strain is? Is there any... Because the label kind of confusing. Mm. Okay, let's take an example from mm. our product, Next Bio. Mm -hmm. So if you see Bifidobacterium, mm -hmm. Animalis, subspecies BB12, like oh. this BB12. Okay. So BB12 is the strain. So, this specific strain has been studied for benefits like improving digestion, uh, supporting immune function. So, that means you are not just getting any pro prebiotic. Uh, sorry. That means you are not get just getting in any probiotic. I see. So, but you are getting one that is backed by science. 
Wait, so if the label only says the species name, right? The one you mentioned just now, mm-hmm. without the BB12? Yeah. So that means you are not sure what you are getting. Mm-hmm. So it can be any version of the species, uh, uh, which not necessarily be the one that is backed by science and research. Meaning to say that, right, Hime, so the key takeaways here, always look for the full name and also the strain code, right? Correct. That little code makes mm-hmm. the difference is whether it's likely to work or not. If it's missing, then that means it could be a generic one or one that is less studied. I see, got it. Okay, so it's not just about dumping billions of bacteria into a product, mm-hmm. but it's making sure specific strains reach where they are needed, alive and active, whether it's in a capsule or tablet or out of form. But wait, does it make any difference, right, if the, it's in capsule, tablet or powder? Because I've seen on shelf, mm. there's something mentioning something like entric coated to protect the bacteria. Would those be better than those without? Okay, so the form, whether it's capsule, tablet or powder, mm-hmm. matters. But what's more important is how the product is uh, made to support survivability. Mother, hear me. What does it mean by how it's made to support survivability? Okay, so for example, some supplements have enteric coating, which means it helps to protect the probiotics from the, from the stomach acid. Uh-huh. So this allows the bacteria to reach uh, to survive the acidic environment and reach the intestines. I see. Will that be the only way to protect them? Well, not really. If you look at Bacillus coagulans or BC30 in our next bio, uh-huh. uh, it's a good example of a naturally resilient strain. So, meaning it can survive the stomach acid without needing any special coating. I see. So, they can do that naturally. That's amazing. It is. So, this strain's ability to withstand uh, stomach conditions is a game changer. So, not all probiotics are created equal. So you need to consider both the strain and how it is uh, formulated to make sure it gets where it's supposed to be, live and active. I see. So I didn't know that strain can do that ma- naturally. That is, like you said, a game changer. Yes. So here's one more. Some people think that fermented foods like yogurt or kimchi uh, gives the same benefit as a probiotic, uh, targeted probiotic supplement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doesn't it? Well, fermented foods are great, don't get me wrong. They do support a healthy gut environment, but they, do, they often contain a mix of microbes. Not necessarily the strains, the specific strains or dosages in a clinically studied uh, sub, in supplements. I see. So, moral of the story, don't fall for pretty labels, read beyond the labels, right? You are right. Don't follow trends. It's always quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. Alright, Amy, we have covered what makes probiotic effective, right? The right stream, the right dosage, and also the right delivery. So if someone like me are already taking a probiotic, so I believe that I'm all set? Not quite. Oh. Because that's like planting seeds in the garden but forgetting to water or care for them. So probiotics don't work in isolation. They need the right environment to grow and do their job. Having said that, right, so there's more to gut health than just probiotics. Yes. Oh. There are three key players. Mm -hmm. Prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics. I see. Pre, pro, and post. Can you break it down so that we can picture? Sure. So, uh, let me give you a picture of a garden. A garden. Okay. Okay, So, you have your uh, your probiotics, Mm -hmm. which are the good bacteria. So, these are the plants where you uh, sit them in the soil. Okay. okay, and then you have the prebiotics, which are the food for your probiotics. So they are the fertilizers for your plants to grow. Mm-hmm. And you have the postbiotics, which are the fruits or harvest. Mm-hmm. So these are beneficial byproducts which your body uses, uh, like short chain fatty acids, enzymes, or compounds that support gut health. I actually like the garden analogy, right, mm-hmm. Hermes? So you're, you're saying that if we are taking probiotic but not giving it the right food, or the probiotic is not active enough, it cannot produce the harvest or the postbiotics. So we're kind of missing out. You are right. So your you might have bacteria in there, but if they are not fed or thriving, then they will stick around long to give benefit to you. So that's why a good gut health requires prebiotics, probiotics, and, and post- postbiotics. Okay, so that actually makes sense. It's not a quick fix. Then it's about creating the right environment for your gut health. You are absolutely right. All right, let's talk about those fertilizers you mentioned just now. Are there any good prebiotics that we should be 
looking out for? Definitely. Mm-hmm. So prebiotics are typically fibers which your body can't digest, mm-hmm. but your good bacteria love them. So things like uh, inulin, uh, fructo oligosaccharides, or galacto oligosaccharides, and even some fruit concentrates. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the fruit concentrate. Okay, that sounds more natural. Are they all kind of the same? Uh, not quite. Mm-hmm. While prebiotics in general help feed your good bacteria, but not all of them work in the same way or support the same strains. I see. Yeah, some are just basic fibers. But uh, others like the gold kiwi fruit extract in Next Bio mm-hmm. uh, offers much, much more. So, what makes the gold kiwi fruit extract in Next Bio different? Okay, so it's actually an award-winning non-GMO ingredient wow. from New Zealand. New Zealand? Yes, okay. and it's rich in multiple bioactives, not just basic dietary fibers, mm-hmm. uh, which, uh, but also polyphenols for antioxidant benefits and vitamin C, mm-hmm. E and folate for <laughs> immune system. I see, so that definitely sounds more than just a fiber. Exactly. And it even contains actinidine, which is an enzyme okay. that helps digest proteins. Uh, so it supports uh, both your gut and digestion. That sounds impressive, Hermes. So it does actually impact gut microbiome. Yes. And this is where it really stands out. Gold kiwi fruit uh, concentrate has been clinically, clinically shown mm-hmm. to promote the growth of Fecally bacterium okay. prosnizi okay. uh, or f prow for short. Okay, f-prow. okay. Yeah. So this is one of the most beneficial bacteria in the gut okay. because it produces butyrate. So it's a short chain fatty acid that helps reduce inflammation and supports or strengthen your gut lining. I see. So those scientific work coming out already. Yes. So it's not just about feeding the bacteria, but feeding the right ones, right? Love exactly. That. That's why we say not all prebiotics are created equal. The right one can help balance your microbiome more effectively by supporting the specific uh, beneficial strains that have a real impact on your health. Alright, so we have covered the plants and the fertilizer. Let's talk about the harvest. What are actually postbiotic and is there any good postbiotic that we should look out for? Okay, so firstly, your postbiotics are actually what your probiotics produce mm-hmm. after feeding on the prebiotics. Okay. Yeah, so this includes things like uh, short chain fatty acids, like for example, butyrate, which supports uh, a good gut lining. I see. So they are actually good result of a healthy gut. Yes. Mm-hmm. And here's the cool part mm-hmm. some products like NextBio mm-hmm. uh, include postbiotics directly. Ah, one example is the dry yeast uh, fermented. So it contains beneficial compounds that support human uh, immune mm-hmm. function and gut health without needing the need for your bacteria to produce them. I see. So it's kind of like a shortcut, right? Mm. While waiting, but rather than waiting for the probiotic to produce postbiotic, you can just get it right away from next bio. Exactly. Huh? So, it's a more complete approach. Give the gut what it needs, support the bacteria you are adding and include the helpful compounds that come from them. That's how you build a balanced, resilient gut. I see. So, bottom line is not just about taking any probiotics. Right. It's about the full picture, uh-huh. the right strain, mm-hmm. the proper support, okay. prebiotics and creating the right environment for them to thrive. I see. So, meaning to say that gut health is not a quick fix. With the right combo, it can make a difference. You are right, Afifa. So, smart choices, real results. I see. Okay, I guess that's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you so much, Hermi, for joining us and thank you for all your insights. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, if you found this helpful, hit that follow button and don't forget to share this episode with someone who cares about their gut health. Till then, Feed your gut, feed your life.